The Oscars are this Sunday. I am so excited. I can't wait to make a video reacting to them. But the Oscars do seem really predictable right now, and we are going to dive into that, starting with Best Picture. Yeah, it seems like Oppenheimer's kind of a shoe in here, and you can kind of see in the way I colored it, you know, you got Oppenheimer in green. I have poor things as like the dark yellow that's verging on orange, and then everything else is orange or red, which is just very unlikely or not likely at all in my eyes. And yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad that we don't really have a competition, but... I would consider Oppenheimer pretty much a lock at this point. And an even bigger lock is Nolan at director. I don't think any of these other nominees have a chance at getting after Nolan. I don't think that there's going to be an upset here. I think maybe Oppenheimer can get upset at picture, but the odds of Nolan getting upset are like zero. For lead actress, this is really, really, really close. First, I'm just going to say Sandra Huller, I have an orange. Who knows? Maybe she could somehow, like, have some huge upset, but probably not. It's really between Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone, and I have Lily Gladstone just barely ahead of Emma Stone because she got SAG. I remember I just, I kept saying SAG will determine it. Like, I'm gonna listen to whatever SAG does, and SAG went with Gladstone. So I'm gonna stick with SAG, and I will be predicting Lily Gladstone. Could I be wrong? Yes, but I just, I feel like Emma Stone will have another Oscar winning performance later down in her career and the Academy recognizes it, but Lily Gladstone, she's taking a three year break from acting and it is really, really hard for indigenous people to get like big acting roles. So, you know, this is Lily Gladstone's chance to get recognized and I think voting members will realize that and vote for her because of it. Lead actor, I have Killian Murphy as the favorite with Paul Giamatti, like he could come in if like there's some old timey producers and directors and actors who all really get behind him, but Killian Murphy, he won SAG. So again, I'm sticking with the SAG winners here and yeah, I mean, he, he also won the BAFTA. So I just think those two put together are just a really good sign that Killian Murphy will probably win. I could see Giamatti, and at a very, 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 very distant, unlikely possibility, I could also see Bradley Cooper. Very unlikely. But, like, maybe? Probably not, though. And, yeah, to me, it's Killian or Giamatti. I have Killian, but Giamatti is possible. Supporting actress, yeah, it's Divine Joy Randolph. There's just no one else has a chance. Same with supporting actor, it is RDJ. Both of them swept. You know, there's just no chance for anyone else, at least in my opinion. Original screenplay, I have Anatomy of a Fall taking this one. And yeah, I, I mean, I think it's kind of close between it and Holdovers, but you know, Anatomy and Win at BAFTA. And I just. I like that screenplay. I feel good about that movie. It got all the nominations it was supposed to, plus Justine Trier, and it would have gotten an international nomination if it wasn't for French politics being really stupid. So yeah, like this is a six nomination international movie, essentially. Like yes, it has five, but I count it as having that six international feature nomination. So yeah, like it's just looking really good to at least win one award, and I think that award will be original screenplay. Holdovers, though, there's always a chance. You know, it's the holdovers, it's Giamatti, it's Alexander Payne, and then past lives. Tiny, tiny, tiny chance. Maestro and May December have no chance. Adapted screenplay, I think this is one of the more interesting categories. Yes, I am picking American fiction to win. But I'm really apprehensive about it. I feel just very apprehensive because it's just like one of those movies where you don't hear about it in any other category, you know, but it won the BAFTA, which was so far-fetched and so unlikely, and I think because it won the BAFTA, it's looking really good, you know, but I have Oppenheimer as a second because it's Oppenheimer. I have Barbie as a more distant third because, you know, for a while it was the huge frontrunner. And then I have Poor Things at Orange just barely making the cut for like, I could kind of see it, but like, probably not. And then Zone of Interest, I'm just like, that's not going to happen. It shouldn't have gotten nominated in the first place, but here it is. So yeah, I'm, I'm very curious about this category. I think it'll go to American Fiction, but 
if Oppenheimer is going to sweep like hugely during these awards, it will get screenplay. So that's why I'm apprehensive. Best Animated, this is another really interesting category to me where it is this race between Spider-Verse and Boy and the Heron. I have Spider-Verse leading right now, but I really think it's kind of neck and neck and it could go to either and I think both are really deserving. And then I have Elemental as a very distant third just because it is a Pixar movie and who knows, Pixar movie could just come out of nowhere and win it. But yeah, I don't know. I have a really hard time with this category because Spider-Verse, it took the Annie and it took PGA, but then Boy and the Heron took, um, it took BAFTA. So I just, I feel like this is a really close, too close to call category. Best documentary, I mean, I think 20 Days of Mariupol has it in the bag. I do have Four Daughters and Eternal Memory as orange, just like very, very distant second and third because maybe they could step in. And then the other two documentaries I just don't think are happening. 20 Days has pretty much been winning everywhere where there is a documentary award to give out. So I just, I, I think it's really relevant and just doesn't really have any strong competition. Best International, I think Zone of Interest has this in the bag. I do have Society of the Snow as a very distant second just because of how much it blew up on Netflix, but I don't think that that will translate into an award win, especially over a movie as strong as Zone of Interest, but who knows, maybe there could be some huge upset here, but I doubt it. Cinematography, this is Oppenheimer's award to lose with Poor Things as a very distant second, but it'll probably go to Oppenheimer. I'm going to do costume design and production design together because they are in really similar situations to me. They have the same five nominees in both and pretty much the same likeliness, at least in my opinion, for all five. My one thing is just I keep flip-flopping every day between Barbie and Poor Things, so for this video, I am saying that Barbie will win both costume design and production design, but honestly, by the time I'm like doing my little poll for um, the actual like Oscars, I might end up flipping the poor things winning both or them splitting in some sort of way. You know, this is really close to call and then Oppenheimer I do as, have as a distant third for both because it's Oppenheimer. I just can't rule it out. Editing, I have Oppenheimer winning it. Very distant second is Killers of the Flower Moon just because of Thelma Schumacher being the editor, but this is Oppenheimer's award to lose and I, I don't see it losing this award. For makeup and hair, I know some people think that this award is really close between Poor Things and Maestro, but I just don't see it. I feel like the excitement for Maestro has been so, so weak and I just feel like people want like a creative winner and that's what Poor Things is. It's makeup and hair isn't just recreating something, it's creating something new and unique and fresh and it just feels so creative. I don't really see Maestro having that great of a chance, though I do have it as the distant second right ahead of Oppenheimer, but I, I really do have a bit of a toss up between like Maestro and Oppenheimer for who is in second place. You know, and then Society of the Snow and Golda, I just have like no chance for either of them. Even though I think Society of the Snow would also be a really good winner, I just think that despite its huge popularity on Netflix, it just came around way too late. If Netflix wanted this movie to have a chance, they should have released it in like early to mid-December. Score, it's Oppenheimer. Pretty easy. For Son, I, I really think it is this battle still between What Was I Made For and I'm Just Ken, but I do have it really going for What Was I Made For now. For a while, it was kind of a toss up to me, but as time's gone on and What Was I Made For has just continued to win a lot more than I'm Just Ken has, I've, I've fallen in line with everyone else in picking it. However, I'm Just Ken is being performed by Ryan Gosling at the Oscars, so like, Who's the real winner here? Sound, I think it's pretty close between Oppenheimer and Zone of Interest. I do have Oppenheimer taking it, but if it ends up being Zone, I could totally see that. Personally, I would give it to Oppenheimer though, and I just think with all the hype behind Oppenheimer, I, I have Oppenheimer winning it here, but again, if Zone got it, I wouldn't be too shocked.
And finally, for visual effects, I have Godzilla minus one taking it now. Previously, I did have the creator, but I, I've switched sides, you know, because the creator has looked really weak. You know, it's been the favorite to win this award, but it hasn't really won a lot of the prerequisites. You know, they've given it to movies like Poor Things, which aren't even nominated. So, yeah, it's really a toss-up, and I, I feel like the popularity of Godzilla Minus One and how it just did so well while the creator was such a box office letdown, to me, that's kind of how I'm determining it here. Now, maybe that could mean Guardians of the Galaxy 3 could sneak in there and take this award, so I do have it at third place, but I don't know. To me, it's Godzilla versus the creator, and I'm going to give it to Godzilla. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this video. Let me know your final Oscar predictions, as we are now only a few days away from the award show, and I would love to just talk about it in the comments down below. Keep an eye out, because in a couple of days, I will be dropping my personal Oscars, where I just kind of pick what I would have nominated, and then what I would have had winning, and also a couple of new categories to just spice things up. I would love for you to go and check out the video, and I will see you there.